In order to look for your student's Gmail accounts in HAPRA, you're going to need to start under Manage Classes. Once you're under Manage Classes, click into the class where you'd like to see a student's Gmail activity. In this window, you're going to go up to the top and there's a Gmail tab. In that Gmail tab, you now have access in elementary to see all student emails in their inbox, their sent, and their trash. If you need to see more emails, right now I can see student 17 and I can only see five emails, six emails. I'm gonna go up to the top and I can change to see up to 25 in the HAPR space. I can go to the student and I can see that there have been some emails. There are some emails I'm concerned with. It gives me the date and the time. And if I hover over it, it will expand the title. But if I click on it, it's going to open up this window where I can see all contents of the email. I can see the student who sent it, which student it was sent to, again, the date and time, the subject and the message. So this gives you a very minimal snapshot of the email in question if you see something that's concerning in the HAPRA window space. If I go up to the top, the second option is sent. I can go ahead and see anything that the student has sent from their email account. If I do the same thing and I click it open, I will get the information from the email. If I go to the trash option, same thing, I'll be able to see emails that have been put in the trash. Keeping in mind, a student can delete an email from the trash. And at that point, we can't see it. Now that I'm in my student's Gmail in HAPRA and I'm taking a look at it, I see a very interesting email here that says security alert. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna click into that email and it's gonna pull the email up. This one is really interesting because what it does is it lets you know that a new device, right here at the top, a new device signed into this email account. So again, anytime someone signs in with an email to a new device that it doesn't recognize, you will find this email in the inbox. So this is a really important one um, if you're doing some detective work because you'll be able to see if someone in fact was able to get into the account who was not authorized to be there. So please take a look at this email um, in the inboxes when you have a situation like this, because this email you'll find in the inbox unless it's been moved to the trash by the user, or if it's been deleted from the trash, you won't see it. But this is a really great place to start is by looking for the email that talks about a new device that has been signed in using this account. Now that I'm looking in uh, my Gmail accounts of my students, I'm noticing that there are some interesting emails. So upon clicking on it, this is the information that I get. Hmm, I'm noticing that there's the word image. Uh, there are no attachments, but there is an image. I'm going to want to investigate this email a little bit further. So what you're gonna have to do in order to get the full context of the Gmail is you're gonna to have to log in to your students' accounts. Now, keeping in mind, if you go to the staff portal, on the left-hand side, all teachers have the ability to change the student password. So teachers, remember these are board-owned accounts. The students nor the parents own the accounts. They are Ottawa Catholic School Board-owned accounts. So you have the ability and the permission to change a student password at any time. This is a really important tool if there's been uh, a suspicion that someone has entered the student's account. Um, this was always your first step, is to reset the password just to make sure no one else can get in right now, and then you can go from there. So every uh, educator has the ability to change the student password. It prompts you as to what information you're gonna need to reset it. And then what you're gonna do once you do reset it is you're going to now log in as the student. So if I'm in a Chrome browser, and this is a laptop that I'm on, so I'm not on a Chromebook, I'm in a laptop, I'm actually gonna go up to my face, 
And instead of my professional account as the educator, I'm actually going to go down and add in the student account. So I actually have to add. So I'm going to say this one is student 19. And then I don't need a desktop shortcut. I'm going to hit done. And it's going to take me to this screen. So now, because I already have the email and the password, I'm going to actually sign in. So I'm going to now sign in as the student. Once I sign in as the student, I am now properly logged in under their account. I can hit link data, and I'm actually going to sync the data as well. So now I have access to the Chrome settings, the Chrome extensions, anything that has been linked to this student's Chrome account. Because I've linked it, I now have access to it. So what I'm going to do now, because this is just a new login, all of the permissions are popping up, but now I can actually go into the student's Gmail account and take a look at some different things. Now that I am in the student's Gmail account, I can start to take a look around to see if I see anything. So remember the email we talked about, about the security alert, the new device signed into this account. So I've seen this email. So this could be an indication that there was someone who logged in on a separate device to this account. If you don't see this email in the inbox in the trash, it could mean that no one did uh, get into the account. But again, that can't be 100% guarantee. But at least uh, you can take a look for these kinds of things in the account to help you out in your um, investigation. If I go back to the inbox, I can take a look at some of the emails that my students are receiving. I can open it up. I can take a look. I can take screenshots. I can find who sent it, uh, dates, all of those kinds of things. But I know that what's relatively new now are, are, are students' uses of Google Hangouts. So Google Hangouts is a chat feature embedded within Google. So on the left-hand side in the Gmail window, you can see some conversations that are happening in the student's Hangouts account. So you can click into it, you can open the conversations, and you can collect information that way. If you needed to see a more detailed, larger window, you can always go to hangouts.google.com while you're logged into the student account. And you can go ahead and take a look at the conversations in this window as well. So you can open up the conversations like we said. You can take screenshots. You can also go in and block users, which is really important. And there is a video on our YouTube channel on how to block users in Hangouts. But it's really easy with the three dots inside the conversation to block them. So if I'm in my student's Gmail account, I can obviously search the emails. I can take a look at the Hangouts as well as going to hangouts.google.com. But I'd like to do a little bit more of an in-depth Hangout search to see if anything comes up from previous history. So if you go into your advanced settings in this search bar in the Gmail account, you can search very specific conversations between students, for example. Maybe it has the words, right? So looking for keywords. You could easily search um, if you know the date and time of the incident that took place. So maybe it was within the past three days. And then down here, it says don't include chats. We absolutely want to keep that open because when you hit search, everything from the past three days is going to come up. And what I can do here, for example, is this one is student 18. And if I click it, what I'm going to see is that this is a hangout with student 18 and student 19. So I can actually go through the conversation and find that information about the Hangouts history between these two students. So again, you can always search for Hangouts, history Hangouts, through the advanced feature in Gmail with the little down arrow. And you can start to narrow it down if you're looking for something very specific. And make sure that you want to include the chats because these are the chats that are going to come up. This is something that I could potentially be concerned about. I hope you and found these tips it open useful. and I can grab that in. Keeping in mind that nothing is 100% guaranteed. So just because you don't find something doesn't mean it didn't happen. These skills are meant more as a way to do some due diligence when investigating a particular situation. 
going through the HAPRA student's Gmail account, as well as going into the student's account and taking a look at their Hangouts history, as well as their Gmail, are really great first steps. But we always want to go back to digital Samaritanship and making sure that our students have the skills and responsibilities to appropriately handle being online.